thank you. Uh, so before this, um, I failed a startup, right? And uh, they say when you fail a startup, it's good, but you should fail a startup in a way that it's fast and in a way that's cheap. When we failed our startup, we failed it in a manner that was as slow and as expensive as possible. And that was not out of intention. It was a decently bad failure, so bad that I am, uh, in fact, proud of that, uh, you know, of, of that failure. That's because what's also said is that whatever you do, make sure you do it to the best of your abilities. And we left no stone unturned in failing our startup well. Um, to begin with, the lessons that I learned with my startup, you know, as, I, as I scaled new heights of stupidity each day running my previous company, I also chanced upon some of the most invaluable lessons on what to not do while running a startup, right? So let's begin. The first thing that I learned is that a good team is everything. We had a bad team, and I had a very, very bad business partners. Let's start with the business partners before we come to the team, right? I was a student in my first semester of college, and this one day, I meet two people who are talking about a business plan competition at IIM Ahmedabad. I know one of these guys from my class, and he knows the second person. And that's how we got together as a team that wanted to go together for a business plan competition of three strangers. One thing led to another, and before we knew it, we were business partners. The only problem was, I did not know my co-founders well enough. And what happens when you do not know your co-founders well enough is that ugly surprises show up. Everything starting from equity issues to trust issues and insecurity, and a whole bunch of other annoying things in between. And you don't want to get into that situation with your co-founders. What also happens when you have a bad team is that you can't build your product. Let me tell you about our team with the help of a story, right? So one day we, uh, one day we called an engineer for an interview. Now, no one would ever show up for an interview on time. Most of them would read up on us and they would find out that we were students, so they wouldn't show up at all. This guy, we called him at 4 o'clock and this guy, he was at our door at 4 o'clock. So we were sitting together and the three of us thought that we should take this guy, right? We were fairly desperate. His resume looked good. We didn't have a tech co-founder, so we had no idea what a tech interview looks like. So we thought we should take him. So I went and I opened the door, and there was this person. His uh, belt was at his collar, and his eye sockets were sunken. He had a very shabby look, and he was decently scary, right? I swear to God, I didn't go home late that night. But we took him, and we took others like him. See, I told you, we were desperate and we were clueless, so we took these guys. And the thing that happened is none of it worked out too well for us, right? So having an important team matters. What I learned from all of this is basically two things. First is that they say don't judge a book by its cover. All that's good, but do not push it. The second thing that I learned is that a startup is nothing but the people that, you know, that, that make that startup. And these people might not always be available in your friend circles or, or amongst your cousins or among their friend circles. It's very important to hunt for these people. Right? And once you get them, you know that you've gotten them. And that's the only way you can achieve success with respect to your team in a startup. The second thing that I learned is that it's very important to talk about your business. I participate in a lot of startup showcase events, and I meet a lot of other founders. I sometimes ask them what their startup does or how they do a particular thing. And the answer that they give is that, I'm sorry, I can't talk about it because you know, it's a business secret. And to top that, they sometimes say that, you know, that's how startups work. So that's nice. And I was exactly like that. You know, at one point of time, I would not talk about my business idea. It was as if I had found my way to the hen that laid all the golden eggs. And I would think in my mind that if I told anybody what I was doing, they would end up copying my business idea. Or they would tell somebody else about my business idea, and they would copy it. And you know, they would eventually get to my golden eggs before me. And my stellar team, of course, you know, thought the same way. So what we did is that we never talked to anybody about what we were doing. We never attended any startup showcases after that. We never attended any business plan events. We didn't go to any summits. Zero networking altogether. In fact, we did a lot of really, really stupid things to stick true to this we will stay silent resolution. In fact, very early on, we thought, you know, we'll outsource the development of our application. So we were supposed to meet this person who would develop our application. And uh, we were supposed to tell everything that you know, we, we were planning to this guy. So imagine the horror that the three of us went through. So uh, before, before we met him, we actually spent hours deciding on how we'll communicate the concept to him in a manner that he gets it, but still doesn't get it. Right? I mean, I myself don't get what I was thinking. Right? I mean, the point is, we did not communicate with anybody. And that, again, you know, sort of led us nowhere. 
because come to think of it uh, some of the best things and this is what i've learned some of the best things that have happened for us at the current company at games of is out of impromptu conversations with people at these events you know our investors our mentors some of the best friends that i've made in the industry are also people that i met at these events right and honestly i hate to break this to you but nobody has the time to go ahead and copy your business idea if it is actually that easy for somebody to copy a business idea then it's not right for you to stop talking to people what's right is that you get a drawing board and you go back and plan barriers to entry for others right that's the way you go ahead so this is the second thing that i learned from failing my startup you should talk about your business the third and the very important thing that i learned is that you should test before you invest right so uh, i had a bad team i had a set of bad co-founders i had the wrong attitude about not interacting with people i think i was not satisfied with something so the next thing we ruined was that we ruined our market research the way we did that is that we anyway operated like secret service agents right we wouldn't talk about our product but at the same time we wanted to build our perfect product at the first go so to give you a quick context what we were making previously was that uh, it was an application where you could play games and you would win some money for playing games the way the business model worked is that this money would come from advertisers so what we did is that uh, before talking to users or to advertisers before even finding out if they wanted something like this we started investing in building the perfect product and we spent 6 months doing that it sounds really dumb when you put 6 months into 6 sentences but back then it wasn't that obvious to us right and what happened is that we got a very very mutated version of what people wanted it somehow uh, worked well with the users but it became increasingly difficult to onboard advertisers and to keep making games on a frequent basis so what i learned is that it's it's very important to go ahead and speak to people about what makes you unique you don't have to have a good design you don't have to have the best website you don't have to have a name for your company all that you've got to do is that you've got to identify what it is that makes your product unique and test that with people and find out if people actually care about that so that's the third lesson i learned you know before you invest in a manner as cheap and as uh, you know as fast as possible you should test your product a word better place to talk about this than a law school right so what i realized is uh compliance is aren't a joke right and uh, so so before you like throw shoes at me or something we were you know we were college kids back then what we did is that uh as a company we didn't maintain our books of accounts we didn't do any legal compliance around the investment that we raised we didn't file our returns on time all that we did was we focused on the product and we thought that that makes up you know for for prioritizing beyond everything else but it sort of doesn't you can't put everything else on the back burner the indian law somehow finds its way to haunt you if you you know if you don't do something right with it and it always comes back with two other things it comes back with really bad and shameless penalties and the second thing for commerce folks like me it comes back with an existential crisis right if if of all things this is what you didn't get right then what were you doing with all your education up till now so trust me you don't really want to face either those penalties or that existential crisis this is the fourth thing that we learned five and most importantly and this rings well with the theme of this uh, event too what does this mean right what does it mean when you say only the deeper why drives what it means can essentially be summed up in a single question why do we do what we do like why do you give five years to studying law why am i running a gaming company why does any company do what they do and the answer to this is not simple right i mean 9 out of 10 startups do not even ask themselves these questions and of course back then we weren't the kind that was one out of the 10 so we didn't ask this ourselves as i said that's because the answer to this is fairly complex why we do what we do is not to make money that's that's a by product that cannot drive everybody forever you know why we do what we do is because we believe in something the why and identifying the why is very important it's the belief that sits at the heart of everything that a company does right let me give you an example Google does everything they do to organize information all the information in the world and to make that accessible to people that's the why for Google Apple does everything it does to deliver excellent experiences to their consumers that's the why for Apple the why is a very very complex question and uh, we don't have the answer for that yet even within games of what i'm sure of is that if in my previous venture you know at our peak we were about 10 people if if you we were to take those 10 people into 10 different rooms and ask them what games of stood for or what what the previous venture stood for i'm sorry they wouldn't be able to give the same answers like even the co-founders if you took us all to different rooms and asked us what the company stood for we would have different answers 
even for my even for my even for my present company, I don't have the answer. But what makes me happy, and this is my pursuit of happiness, is that I'm looking for this answer in my in my current company. Why do we do what we do? And the reason this is important is because this is what drives people. This is what motivates the founders through thick and thin. This is what attracts talent. This is what attracts consumers. This is what attracts believers who become the champion users of your products to go ahead. And this is very important in the success of any company. To keep it short and simple, right? And uh, to to uh, to sum all of this up. So yes, I started a company, and yes, it tanked. But the good thing is that there was somebody very very early on to show me the mirror. And the only thing that I probably got right was that I was willing to admit that I had been wrong. And what's interesting is, you know, uh, making mistakes. They say is is a privilege of the active. It's only the mediocre people who are negative, and you always spend time thinking of the fact that they were not wrong. And that's not what I said. That's some. That's this person called Ingvar Kamprad from IKEA, who said that. So my brother and I, you know, we, my brother and I had to build everything up from scratch in this new app and this new company. And this new company is. Everything that my previous company couldn't be, and more. What makes me happy is that we are asking the right questions in this company. So I'll leave you with one message, right? And this is what I tell myself every time I face a problem. You cannot get a utopian start to everything. But what stands between you and utopia is that insane amount of hustling that you do not know you're already capable of. And that's what I'd like to sum this up with. So thank you. Those are the five lessons that I learned from today.